Hey everyone, Dr. Bagbinger here and let's start the basic anatomy and physiology related with strabismus, right? So in order for us to understand strabismus, we first need to understand the extraocular muscles of the eye, right? The one which move the eye left, right, up and down and of course twist them as well. There are actually six muscles which act on the eye, right? Four of them are called the rectus muscles and two of them are called or the oblique muscles, right? So let's, let me draw, draw a little diagram of an eye. Let's say this is the eyeball, right? Of course, and this is the right eye, right? This is, this is the little nose. This is the right eye. So total of six muscles. Let's draw the four recti first, right? Very, very easy. There's a superior rectus from above. There is a medial rectus from the from the medial side. There is a lateral rectus from the lateral side. There is a inferior rectus from below, right? Very easy. Nothing difficult about that. Then there are two other special muscles called the obliques, right? Let me let me have a different color for that. Let's say these white are obliques. So there is a superior oblique which kind of attaches here and then twists around like that, okay? And up here, there is this little thing called a trochlea to which it is attached, right? It's all right if you forget this, but not, not really important. And then there is this other muscle called the inferior oblique, right? Which is attached somewhere around here, and then it twists and attaches somewhere there, right? Ah, I know I made a little, little bit of a mess in this diagram, but in the next diagram, we will see how these work. In fact, let's, let, let me just take you to the next diagram. Here are the muscles that, that I'm talking about. This muscle right here, not the cut one, that's a different muscle. Uh, this, mu then this one muscle right here, which is attached here, this is superior oblique, sorry, the superior rectus, this is the medial rectus, this is the inferior rectus, this, is, this one here is the lateral rectus, this one up here is the superior oblique, this one is the inferior oblique, right? I took this image from Wikipedia, by the way. Here's the nose, of course, So this and this is the right eye. Their innervation is very, very important, right? And there is this very well-known formula which people use to remember it, right? LR6, lateral rectus is supplied by the sixth cranial nerve. SO4, superior oblique is supplied by the fourth cranial nerve. R3, all the rest of them, R means the rest of them, they're supplied by the cranial nerve 3. So sixth cranial nerve is the abducent nerve right abducent nerve and it applies a lateral rectus over here and that's a very good name very convenient name because that is exactly what the rectus does it abducts the eyeball it moves the eyeball towards the outside so abduction is caused by the abducent nerve very convenient then here the fourth cranial nerve up here so4 superior oblique this one right here is supplied by the fourth cranial nerve which is called the trochlear nerve right and it may have something to do with this green structure here which is called a trochlea right so the trochlear nerve uh, supplies the uh, superior oblique and then the, all the rest of them which include inferior oblique right inferior rectus medial rectus and superior rectus they are supplied by the oculomotor nerve which is the third cranial nerve so we really need to understand how the eye moves how these muscles work right so if we I mean we all know the basic four movements of the eye right so the eye can look up right just like that the eye can look down like that the eye can look left or sorry right in this case like that the eye can look towards the left side as well okay nothing so difficult the muscle which help us look above is of course the superior rectus the muscle which helps us look below is of course the inferior rectus. This is a bit complicated. The muscle which helps us look towards the left side. Well, in case of the right eye, it is the medial rectus. In case of the left eye, it is the lateral rectus, right? And if we want to look towards the right side, we're going to use the lateral rectus of this eye and the medial rectus of this eye, right? Very easy, nothing so difficult about it. And then, of course, 
there is a combination of these moments. If you, for example, want to look above and on the right side like that, for example, and that, we're going to need the combination of the muscle which moves it there and the muscle which moves it up here, right? And the combination of these will move it here. So same as the case here. The muscle which moves it medially and the muscle which moves it above, right? And in this way, we can understand that the eye can move in like many directions. Understanding eye movements is very easy. But there is one other movement called torsion, right? Which includes extorsion and intorsion. And that is a bit of a complicated thing. And we will study that in the very next slide. But let's leave that for a second right now. Let's talk about these few terms related to eye movement. There is this word called virgins, right? And virgins is the condition in which the eyeballs move in opposite direction, right? For example, if here's the eyeball, right? If, if here are the eyes. Now, normally, if, this, if, if the eye looks there, this eye will look there as well. If this eye looks there, this, this eye will look there as well, right? But virgins is a condition in which, for example, if this eye looks towards the middle, this eye will also look towards the middle, right? And there are two kinds of virgences. There's divergence when they're looking outside towards the lateral sides. And then there is convergence, which is the eyes, both of them looking towards the middle, right? Towards the medial side. And we will be studying these in detail in the next presentations, right? So if you don't understand, but I'm, I'm pretty sure you understand what I mean, right? So we will study them there as well. Then there is this other one called version, right? And version is exactly what I was talking about a second ago. So if you, these are, these are the eyes, right? If one looks there, the other looks there as well, normally. If one looks down, the other eye looks down as well. This property is called version. And this is possible because of a phenomenon called the yoking of muscles, right? These are just new words, right? And they're not really complicated. They're just new words. What is yoking? Yoking kind of means pairing up the muscles, right? So a set of yoke muscles, let's talk about a set of yoke muscles. The, for example, the lateral rectus of this eye and the medial rec rectus of this eye, they are yoke muscles. Why? Because by the action of these yoke muscles, we cause version, right? If we use the lateral rectus here and the medial rectus here, our eyes will look towards the one single direction. Looking at one single direction is called version. And this is possible by the yoking of muscles. <laughs> Strange words, right? Just new words, right? It's, it's all basic concepts. Even if you don't know the word version, if you don't know the word yoking, it doesn't matter in the very least, right? It is just, these are just words designed to confuse you, right? There is absolutely nothing. The reason why I'm mentioning these words is because if you if if you encounter these words in the exam so they're not like absolutely new to you right you have a little bit of an, a little bit of an idea of what is this so yeah nothing so difficult about it at all then there is this special kind of movement called extorsion and intorsion right they're torsions and torsion in physics kind of means twisting right twisting rotating in that kind of sense right so extorsion means rotating towards the outside or not well, I, mean, I keep saying outside i mean towards the lateral side right and in torsion means rotating towards the medial side and you might be thinking what the heck am i talking about well so let's look at these eyes of a little girl right and let's let's make a let's make a plus symbol right like that and like that okay you'll see what i mean you'll see why i drew this now, let's imagine this girl tilts her head towards one side, for example, like this, right? Now, let me ask you a question. If the plus, if we draw that plus sign again, would it be like this? Would the eye have tilted as well? Or would the eye have kind of compensated and still keep the sign like this in the form of a plus instead of being like a cross? The answer is the eye rotates in the opposite direction of your head tilting right so in a way when you moved your eye like that your whole eyes you although you did not observe it but they actually kind of twist towards the opposite direction of your head tilting right and this is called the torsion movement right in this case this eye rotates towards the out towards the outside and kind of rotates counterclockwise and because it's moving towards the outside 
This is called extorsion, right? This eye over here, it rotates towards the medial side. And this is called intorsion, right? It's easy, right? It's nothing. So there's nothing so difficult about it. It's a bit new, right? And people who haven't really studied it in their anatomy classes, they might have a little bit of a difficult time understanding this. But this is actually very, very easy. Nothing difficult at all, right? And yeah, these movements, right? Extorsion, extorsion is done by the inferior oblique, right? In both eyes. And torsion is done by the superior oblique, right? And I think that will be it. In the next lecture, we will be studying strabismus. We will be studying what is a squint and we will be studying the types of squints as well. And yeah, like, subscribe and share if you learn something. And I'll see you in the next one.